Hello, Miss Elsa. She has her happy face on. This is good news. Black? Yeah, today I'm gonna go black. I think before I get on, I'd like to find out exactly where they're at. Yeah, because I'm not gonna need too much time to warm her up. I mean, here's a little tip like <clears throat> this uh, you know, if you've got, you know, some that that do some funny things sometimes in a show pen, whether it's in a lead change or whatever, and, uh, and you have a dark horse with dark legs like her, and you put white wraps on her, then you're making all of these movements very, very apparent, as opposed to going black, where you're sort of masking the leg a little bit. So if you do have a little fumble, sometimes it's a little harder to catch. It's a little bit the same concept as we do in hockey. You, you tape your stick black, so this way the goalie can't see the puck as well. But if you have white tape on your stick, then he knows exactly where that puck is at. So it's a little bit the same idea behind that. We'll put some vet wrap over the wraps and keep them nice and clean so I can I don't like changing them to clean ones when I'm grooming because one, it takes too much time and two, I mean, whatever feel you've got when you get ready is, and you know, when everything is working, you definitely don't want to be changing any of that, so. so. I always like to go over the ankle twice with my wraps, make sure that I support the, support the suspensory better. And I like to make sure that I really just apply the wrap nicely without any folds going downward, but apply the pressure when I'm going back upward so that I'm not pushing the blood pressure down into the foot, but having, an, having, having it up going up towards the leg. You know, many horses are prone to scratches and Miss Elsa, she is sometimes prone to scratches and I think we've got them under control here because I think the shavings are pretty nice but if sometimes when we're somewhere that the shavings are not, then uh, she gets scratches and, uh, and so one of, the, one of the bell boots we really like and those are looking a little shabby now because the company uh, was on back order during the COVID period and so they're just starting to get those back in production so I need to stock up again. But it's those, uh, those with the wool at the top there and uh, those are great bell boots for the horses that tend to have sensitive skin back there and, and they get scratches. So, highly recommend. Check this out. Miss Elsa is perfect in every way except her tail. It's getting better. It is, isn't it? So much better than when we got her. Yeah. So much better than when we got her. She's slightly follically challenged. But putting those tails is an art and I'm glad you're great at it because I've seen some embarrassing moments. You see that cow horse guys were putting fake tails in their horses at the run for a million. I swear. I was like, so this is good. Progress. You know, the, the reining at the run, no, the cow horse, the reining part of the cow horse at the run for a million was to me like, like some of them would have been, you know, game players in the actual reining part of the show. Man, they stopped good and, and looked so good in the pen. While I still got hair, cause I'm feeling like it's going away. I'm gonna start putting a fake tail on your face. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so game plan, running pattern six. Pattern six, walk to the middle, turn to the right, turn to the left, lope off to the left, which is perfect for you because turn to the right is the best for her first, lope off to the left is the best for her first. Then our left to right lead change can be tricky. She likes to fumble it. And most of the time it slides, but we gotta make sure you don't fumble too much. This is why we have our black wrap strategy. Hope that helps. But it's a small arena, so it's not like I have a lot of time to really straighten her up. So it's all gonna come quick. So you'll need to, 
have that dead on. So my strategy with that in the last days has been to just like counter canter in like second gear, sometimes even third gear, not crazy fast, but just like a really forward lope, um, semi fast circle kind of thing, counter cantering until she holds that and then I just change lead and then she doesn't. So she's just been sort of anticipating that lead change and she changes lead before you actually ask her with the outside leg, she changes when you remove your inside leg and that's what caused the fumbles and that's just a little bad habit and my way of fixing that is making sure that you can counter canter in second gear third gear and it usually fixes all the change problems somebody asked me earlier what was my trick to fix the changes whenever i get that kind of problem and i'm telling you counter canter in third gear until you can do that easy you'll fix your lead changes Yeah, so again, we got pattern six. So I got to spin to the right, spin to the left, go to the left, big, big, small change, big, big, small change. So uh, this is, you know, I'm just kind of going to go through the motion here and, and do a little bit of that. The tricky part, again, is going to be my lead change. So I'm going to want to make sure that I program that right. The turn with this mare, I mean, she's a really good turner and I don't need her to turn her a lot. So I'm going to ask her probably one time each way just to make sure that she's getting off my outside rein and thinking about moving her feet. And that's really all that she needs. I mean, she's the type of show horse that you don't need to overdo it and make her too tired or uh, you trust her a little bit and, and, uh, and usually she'll give you uh, all, that she, uh, all that she can. And uh, the last run that she did in the Chopin was uh, with her owner, Mystery, in, in, in Vegas. And it was one of the best runs that this mare, I think, has ever done. And definitely the best run Terry's ever done. So I feel like she's got her ready for me <laughs> to show today. So uh, uh, anyway, she's been feeling great. So I'm going to go through the motion here. I think one of the key elements is going to be that when I, can, when I lift my hand on this mare, she can be a little bit stiff, a little bit tight in the body. And I think that also plays a role in the lead change and I need her to look really smooth and be forward in the bridle. So my key, the key element here is going to be for me to be able to take a full hold, hold of her face and feel no resistance along the way. So I'm going to do a lot of pick up and release. I'm not going to be too picky about where she's at. I just want to, I just want to feel, see just like that. I want to feel no resistance when I lift my hand. So this is what you're going to see me do a lot. I'm going to make sure that she gives me to the corner of her mouth, the inside corner of her mouth when I lift, especially the left side corner of her mouth because she's a left-handed mare. So I need to make sure she gives that to me. And, uh, Let's do this. Now that I have her pretty soft, she's reacting good to my hand. She's not resisting, but she is slowing down a little bit. So I want to be able to speed up just a little bit. Every time that I lift my hand, I want her to give it to me nice, but I also want to feel there, just like that. I want to feel her stride extend just a little bit and I release and relax. I lift. Every time I lift, I want to feel that, that, that stride ex extend. So for that, it's like if I ask her to speed up. What also this does is it, is it helps me program her reaction when I am going to ask her to lope off or to speed up in the Chopin. So when I feel that I can lift my hand and I get a really good reaction right here and, <clears throat> and she doesn't lose her forward motion, I'm ready to work on my fast circles. practice when I slow down I want her to give me a full 
a full collection here when I'm going slow. I want the same reaction when I'm going fast, but I also want a good reaction when I go from fast to slow. So in a Chopin, I'm gonna slow her down with my hand on her neck, but in practice, I'm gonna slow her down by taking a hold of her like that. And when I can do that transition, slow down from fast to slow and take a good hold of her face and her not brace against me, then I know that I got her using her body the exact way she needs to, to slow down properly. So this is also a good preparation for the lead change. All right, so now it's coming up a little bit closer. So I think that is gonna be a good time right now to get my right circle out of the way. So I'm gonna get my right circles done. Then I'll give her a little bit of a rest and then I'll do my spins before my lead changes. This way I get to do a little bit, simulate a little bit my pattern, which is turn first then circle. And I think that it's gonna be a good way to way to do it so except that here I've got everybody on the right side and I want to circle right and the left side is empty so I try to always make sure that I got plenty of room to run whenever I I go and the ground's a little bit sketchy on the outside so I can't really hug the walls the way that I would like to do it here so I'm still a little bit more on the inside now I could have loped off in a counter canner and changed their lead before my right my fast right circles which is how I'm gonna do this in the pan but I will do it after my my second set of lead change or after I work my lead changes I'll do another set of, uh, of fast right circles and slow her down one more time then but right now I need to work a little bit more her her driving the bridle and I don't want to be doing that again later I just want to circle her fast there we go See, this was a good give right here. I gotta make sure I get, I get her to be really soft to my hands when I take her and give me the right corner of her mouth so that she's looking where she's going. I'm gonna hold her a little tighter coming through the middle. pretty good she came back nice she gave me about 60% of that before it kind of felt her get tight which the first 60% without any resistance is where I want her to go show so I'll go a little deeper when I push her in the bridle to work on my lead changes but for now she was feeling really good all right so the latest scoop is we've got four more a drag and then me right after the drag fresh ground which I'm very happy about got a little crowded in here because they started to pay warm-ups again in the other arena but Gotta get her turned, so I'm gonna find a spot here in the middle. See there, she didn't stop right away when I opened my legs. When she knows it's time to turn, she does the same thing a little bit in the middle of the Chopin, and I schooled on that a lot this weekend, but there we go. I need to make sure that she's paying attention. So when she gets a little bit nervous, she's that way. So then that means she's got her body energy scattered all over her body a little bit this way. She's not as ready to start to turn as, as she would be if she keeps her, her neck relaxed. Again, I don't need to turn her too much. I just need to make sure she's off my rein, moving her feet. She just took a big breath right here, so I try to always wait for her to do that before I go into the next, next turn. Oh, 
That was very nice. I like how she moved her feet here, got off my rein nice, and she didn't do it with her neck stiff she gave. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now I'm going to do my lead changes. I need to get a little bit of some of that fresh out of her. She kind of got a little fresh again and a little tight after just walking around and doing nothing for the last 20 minutes. So it's time to get her warmed up again. Same thing here. See how she slowed down? When I lifted my hands, that's her anticipating the lead change. So I'm just gonna keep going in my counter counter here. I'm sure I can take a full hold, make sure I get a good give on both corner of her mouth, the right corner and especially the left corner of her mouth. When I feel I get it, I release and I take again. There we go. That's nice. She changed lead on her own there, but <clears throat> I'm not gonna make a fuss about it. Make sure that she keeps going forward when I lift my hand. gonna go in the fast circle right here but if you see that person in front of me right there I'm not sure where she's going so <clears throat> I think that I'm gonna wait till she goes somewhere else or get my distance from her a little bit before I speed up I don't want to get myself caught behind that one it doesn't look great let's try now Okay, so I think that that's as good as it's gonna get. I don't wanna waste any more energy on that. So what I'm gonna do now is, <clears throat> she, she's got a decent rollback. Okay, it's either very, very good or it's pretty shabby, meaning she'll, she'll just kind of like get really tight in all her body and just kind of turn 180 and lope off and it doesn't look great and there's a lot of chances she may trot out of it. So, uh, uh, so I need to work on it and she doesn't like rolling back. That is the thing she doesn't like. So, but when she's well programmed to do it, she does it really, really well. So this is gonna be, the place I don't want to leave points on the table and this is going to be pretty much what I want to make sure she'll do good so I'm going to do some rectangles here until she feels good and say well somewhere not too fast and work on those rollbacks if she's doing them nice I'll leave them alone if she needs some work on it then I'm going to go to the fence and work on it on the fence a little bit
she didn't get too stiff. She didn't quite finish her move, but, but it was decent enough. All right, well, we were close. Uh, I think the spins were pretty good. The first one, she got hauled, hung up a little bit and, and wasn't as fluid as she can be. And uh, I like to joke around. I told Miss Terry, your owner, now she gets to fix it because she always turns the best for her than she does for anybody else. And this is just how it is. It's, and, and me as a trainer, I've got to try to really figure out why and apply that to what I'm doing because obviously it matters. But anyways, left turn was good, circles were good, and then the third one she did, thank God. So I don't think we're going to get a score that's going to be in like in the top three. Uh, but hopefully I'll be up there enough to have enough money that we can come back around Thursday and add up to that score and, uh, and go for the weekend awards. So meanwhile, I mean, uh, like we do after every ride with her, we're going to take her to the saltwater spa. So we put a lot of importance to the care of our horses when we're at the horse show 
anything that we can do and everything that we can do to keep them feeling their best and not overdoing it is, is how we like to do things. Um, like for the stops, I had a feeling she may not like the ground in there and I could have done a bunch more before to make sure until she does, but then I tire her out and I kind of sour her out and, and we're in this for the long haul. So I still think we did the right approach. I think that maybe I need to prepare her a little bit different. So we'll see on Thursday how it goes. Until then, let's just go to Saltwater and close this for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.